Okay, so I'm making a baton. Today I'm testing the survival edge uh, hollow handle survival knife. We're going to do a little bit of cutting, tell you a little bit about it, and then give a little batoning test. So, uh, skin's pretty good. I mean, it cuts wood good. It's sharp. Let's see how it will. The skin, this is a Scandi grind, sometimes called a Nordic grind. It's basically a zero ground uh, with a short bevel. Uh, with the zero grind, it has pretty uh, pretty small edge angle, so it cuts pretty well. It should get right into this rope. Yeah, it just bite, bites in there real good. Does an effortless cut there. You know, this is a, I think like a special project's price is $35 on this. It's probably a lot cheaper online. With this, what we call a Scandi grind, it's easy to resharpen theoretically because you hold the uh, whole entire bevel on your stone, you know, depending on whatever you have. And of course you can, so that acts as a, a, an angled guide. And you can do this, you know, the method of slicing the stone or, you know, you could do circles, whatever. But it's probably one of the easier things to bring back up to sharp after you uh, need to touch up the edge. This sheath works left, right. So if you're carrying it on your left side or your right side, it's got a belt loop, belt clip, I should say. And it has a fire starter, which is pretty cool. And the nice thing here is you won't worry about losing that fire starter because it clicks in there pretty well. Plus, the quillion here, the finger guard, keeps that from ever wanting to come out you know, when you're wearing the knife. There's a drain hole in it, and you can hang that You know, if you're hanging on a shelf or off a boat or whatever. I collected some of this on the way to work. And I'm pretty sure, I haven't tried this, but I'm pretty sure that this will throw enough spark to to get about anything you want, any appropriate tender, start it up. Yeah, I would say that works. All right, get that out of here. If you take your time and fluff that up, it'll probably work really good. It is a hollow handle knife. It has removable O-rings. You could remove the O-rings because you don't like them, or maybe you could, you know, in an emergency, maybe you can use these O-rings for something. You probably could, if you really think you needed to, you probably could make a walking stick or a spear and, you know, shape this correctly and put that in there. But, you know, if you do it wrong, you, maybe you could, you know, deform this handle shape. So I would use caution if, if you're really in such a dire circumstances that you need a spear, that could be done. Otherwise, you'd only be doing it for fun. Okay? So we're going to, uh, well here, let's talk about what you can put in here. Obviously you can put tinder in here. One of these I filled up with 22 shells. I think I got it when I put a little, little paper towel, because yes, you could use that for tinder, plus a couple of shells from, from bouncing around. And I think I fit about 24, 25 shells in there. You know, you could put fish hooks, you could put line. Mostly what you probably want is fire starter in there, whether it's, uh, little bits of rubber or, or Vaseline coated uh, cotton balls or Q-tips work really good. You can fill up with Q-tips and coat those with Vaseline and act like little candles. But anyway, let's try to baton this. Now the purpose of for batoning this, bear in mind I cut this today before I came into work with the kukri and it cut really well. In fact, it took two easy cuts, bang, bang, and I cut through that. But this is a I don't know how many ounces this is, but a $250 big kukri. If I were in a survival situation, I would prefer this because you could chop anything, do anything, and probably kill anything. However, a $20 survival knife that has, that has a fire starting kit certainly has its place. And as long as you know where that place is, it can be very valuable to you. So I would say if you're going to go baton pre-cut lumber, you know, I'd be pretty cautious of using something like this or any, any small fixed blade in general. Um, you know, it's funny, you'll see guys who will baton cut lumber, and if you brought your cut lumber out to your campsite, well, bring a hatchet or bring an axe or something to split it with instead of your, your six inch pocket knife. But anyway, the first challenge with baton is getting a proper, appropriate baton. So, this is part of that. 
Um, and the circumstance is I'm going to just make a walking stick. Anything like this, maybe I can break this knife. Uh, you may say, well, steel versus wood, the steel should always win. Well, that's not the case, just like when a car hits a tree, the tree usually wins. Um, but you could, uh, this is maple. It's a little extra hard this time of the year because it's just in the winter and there's, there's still not a lot of water or sap in this, so it's a little harder than it would be uh, in the summertime. So, you know, with the right technique and the right care, you could baton, you know, anything you really would need to. Uh, would it, could I break this batani? Yeah, I, I certainly could break this batani. Especially if I was beating the living crap out of it trying to. But, if this were the only knife I had, the only cutting tool, I would be pretty careful with it. Of course, shame on me if this is my only cutting tool, since I'm a knife maker and work for cold steel. Now this maple is not wimpy stuff, it's hard to cut. But you can see green lumber, with like maple. Can be easily baton. Bear in mind this knife, you know, is it's hollow. It only has a tang about an inch long. Now this does tend to get harder once you get past the sap wood and get into the core there, but if you just keep on taking beaver cuts out of here, you'll be able to get that right off. I dare say you could do that all day with that much intensity with this knife and uh, you'll still be in good shape. Survival Edge versus 1 inch Manila Rope. It was easier than I thought. I'm going to give this a flex test. Um, bear in mind it is a plastic handle as reviewed, hollow about a one inch tang, it's got about a one inch opening, eighth inch, about an eighth inch, maybe a hundred thousandths wall thickness in here. Um, it is watertight, we tested that, we put tinder in there and tested that. So I'm going to put this in the vise just past the clip and uh, maybe take it to 10 or 20 degrees and, and uh, it's probably hard to see. What's that, about 10? Yep. So that's about 10 degrees there. Uh, go true? Yeah. Now really, if you're prying something and you're doing any more than that, you're asking for trouble. There's, there's no job that you should be on a small knife prying this much. I mean, you clearly can see that it's, uh, you're stressing this blade out. And if it's, again, if it's your only knife, then you're gonna be shortly having no knives. So I'd be very careful. Now I'm gonna try to maybe take it to 20. Uh, because yeah, 10 was good, but it's getting pretty hard right there. You know, I'm not putting any weight into it. It's just all hand and arm strength, but did I get to about 20? Yeah, you're, you're pretty much at 20. And it's good to see that the, the plastic held up. I mean, I can't think of any time, and I've done a lot of stupid things with knives because I have a huge unending limit of, of knives that I really needed to I've never been in any life in different situations, but I've never really needed to pry anything anywhere near like this with a knife like this. So I would say that's, you know, that's a respectable performance there. We're going to try to take this to failure by hand. Uh, we already did to 10 degrees and 20 degrees a couple times. And uh, we'll see what we can get here. About 30 with a set, huh? Yep. I'm gonna get my face shield. Uh, here we go. I know what I need. I'm getting safer and safer as I go. It's pretty surprising how well that tang holds in there. Okay, I'm gonna try to take this down to the max now. See what we get. Tell me if I get past 45. Is that 90 yet? You're real close. So that's 90 degrees. 
My knife is not broken. It certainly took a set. It's good to see that that tang, you know, didn't break out at all. Um, just for fun, I'm going to see if I can get this anywhere near straight. This would be horrible abuse to your knife, that's for sure. Not only to bend it like that, but then to try to straighten it. I don't know that I'll ever get it straight without heat, like a tempering heat. But uh, it'd be interesting to see if I can make a, a usable knife out of it. Almost there. Of course, you're not going to have advice to straighten your knife out when you're camping. But hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you won't have that. How would you ever bend a knife that much anyway in the first place? So, we're just trying to test the integrity of this handle and the toughness of this blade, and it's pretty impressive, I think. I'm going to run out of patience, I think, before I get this uh, straightened out. But, I think it could be done, which is a testament to the toughness. What do you think? It's all, it's pretty well usable. I've yeah. seen knives in worse shape than this in my time. So uh, that went to about 90, got straight. Yes, it's warped, bent, but um, yeah, it would still work. Pretty cool. It's rebel edge.